Hello, friends. The webinar is, uh, is, is live. I'm waiting for more attendees to join in. We'll probably give them a minute and then uh, get started. See the attendee count going up. All right, I think we can start. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Be Waste Wise. I am Shweta Dandapani. I am the community builder at Be Waste Wise. A little bit about Be Waste Wise before we start. Uh, we started with one moderator in 2013. And it's 10 years of Be Waste Wise this year. Uh, we now have, we had 12 moderators last year. And uh, in today's session, we have Shian Kafi Yang, who's moderating the webinar. She's uh, worked with us on other webinars as well, please head to our website or our YouTube channel to see the other webinars that Shyam has put together. And we set Be Waste Wise to grow around the principles of dialogue and diversity. And we have uh, moderators who come from different parts of the world, who come from diverse backgrounds. And uh, together they're posing questions, teasing out insights and guiding conversations that's relevant to all of us. So thanks a lot to our moderators, including Shyam. And uh, today, she has put together this panel, which is going to tackle the subject of entrepreneurship and waste in the Caribbean. Uh, Sean is going to Sean, who is the founder and CEO of CL Environmental Services. I did not mention this before. She is going to talk to Christiana Paul, founder and director of We Planet Incorporated, and Darin Jeffrey, who is a founder of Eco Wash. Uh, please, uh, just a reminder that your questions will be answered live uh, by the panelists. So please use the Q and A section, drop your questions there, introduce yourselves on chat. Just let's just join the conversation now. Over to you, Shia. Thank you very much, Swetha. And hello, everyone. And thank you very much for joining us in today's webinar. Uh, I am Shan Kafi Young, your moderator and the moderator for all of our sessions focused in the Caribbean region. Today's diet, today's discussion really is focused on a space that is very near and dear to me because I am a part of it too, and that is entrepreneurship and waste in the Caribbean region. I have been working in waste management for almost two decades, and uh, next, I think, next year is going to be my 20 year anniversary. <laughs> so I've been around these parts for quite some time and also started um, this year, made it to eight years in my own entrepreneurial journey and what a journey it has been. And so today I am joined by two fantastic entrepreneurs in the space, Christiana, and Christiana Paul and Dereem Jeffrey, who I think are, are doing if my opinion counts, are doing very, very amazing and phenomenal work in the field, uh, really being innovative, being future thinkers, you know, really taking this sector and disrupting it because I consider myself to be a disruptor. So thank you very much for joining us. And as Suitha said, please put any questions that may come up for you in the Q&A box of the chat. So in the chat itself, you could feel free to introduce yourself. I would love to know where you are joining us from. So tell me that in the chat, put the countries that you are joining me from. Hopefully it's not too early or too late for any of you. And uh, we are going to jump right into the conversation. So um, this question is for you both, Christiana and Dream. So I'm young in last name, but I'm not young forever. So I have to <laughs> have my little notebook that I'm looking at the question. So if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my little notebook. Okay. So the first question is, I really wanted to start the conversation with shaping why you chose to join, to, to, to work in this space. Why choose to join uh, waste management and... Uh, what was your push to starting your respective businesses in this field? So, Christiana, I will go with you first. And I'm seeing we have people from the UK, from Washington, D.C. I was just in Washington, like, maybe two weeks ago. David, it would have been nice to meet you. <laughs> I, I was just there a couple of weeks ago. So, awesome. All right. So, Christiana, so what made you want to 
work in the waste management sector? What made you want to start your business in the first place? So over to you. Thank you, Cheyenne, for that question. And hello to everybody listening. I'm Christiana from Dominica. And anytime someone asks me that question, I always have the same response. Um, this sector didn't choose me. Social entrepreneurship didn't. I didn't choose it. It chose me, really. Because I've always been interested in creating solutions, no matter what shape or form it takes to solve pressing issues within our community. And it just so happened that I was able to come up with a very innovative solution that solved the pressing issue, that being environmental climate change. And so it kind of took on a life of its own, right? So I never started off when I had the idea of We Planet as to how can we reduce the use and overuse of non-biodegradable items in the environment. It never came to me at first, well, I'm gonna start a social enterprise. That was my first thought. My first thought, well, I have this idea, I think it would be really cool to have an app that rewards people for living an eco-friendly lifestyle. Let's take that idea and see what happens. And then so over the years, I kind of just fell into, well, I now have this social enterprise that does all these amazing things and I'm in the space and sector. So I cannot say there was a certain point where I was like, I'm going to enter the waste management sector. It just kind of happened to go that way. And I think a lot of people who have ideas usually just start off with the idea and then it starts to take on a, a form, a life of its own, really. So it's not until like since it was last year, um, our app that rewards people for living an eco-friendly lifestyle and making everything official, incorporating the business and everything that didn't happen until last year, 2022. But I've had the idea for over six years. So it's um it's something that I like to say that the sector and social entrepreneurship, I didn't choose it, but it chose me because I was, oh, I've always been that type of person. I've been an entrepreneur at heart, but I've always been that type of person. No matter what I'm doing, it's not just to make money. I have to make an impact or else I won't feel fulfilled at all. So that is how I will um, answer that question. <laughs> Thank you, Christiana. Tareem? Okay, awesome stuff. Uh, hi, well, my name is Doreen Jeffrey. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. My company, EcoWash, uh, is pretty similar to Christiana, kind of stumbled on EcoWash. Uh, I'm originally from rural Trinidad, Maruga to be exact. And living, as we consider in the country, we always struggle for a constant supply of water. So it was just a norm for us water will come once every two weeks in the wee hours of the morning. You know, you have to get up that hour and wash and wash your wears and wash your clothes and so forth because the water wouldn't last for long. And at the age of 17, I moved up to St. Augustine, very near to the University of the West Indies. And while renting up there, I would always find myself waiting in the bathroom for the water to end. And the water just never stopped flowing. So I would find myself bathing sometimes four and five times a night just out of pure fascination with that. And then my fascination turned to frustration because I couldn't understand why persons from this segment of society will benefit from this basic human right as far as I consider it and other segments are, are struggling to have that constant water supply. So when I began to do my research, one of the major things that affected our uh, availability to in drinking water is that Trinidad has over 500 car washes and we have over 1 million cars on the nation's road. And each car takes around 180 to 250 liters of water to be washed. So if each car is washed once a month, that's 180 million liters of water being wasted. As far as I consider it, it's being wasted. So my idea was, how do I come up with a a water conservation car wash that would aid in that water that's being wasted in the industry, being diverted to persons in rural Trinidad. So that's where we came up with EcoWash that utilizes only two liters of water to wash a mid-sized sedan. It's the only water conservation car wash in the country and the only legal car wash during periods of water restrictions, apart from the normal bucket and sponge method. 
That is awesome. Can I tell you, I just love hearing people's stories about how they fell into their journeys. I mean, it's absolutely, it is absolutely amazing. But to re, you know, coming from Maruga, coming from rural Trinidad and not having water to going to university and realize, well, wait, the water's still flowing? More bathing, okay. <laughs> so Christiana, who, you know, it really fell into her lap. She's always been interested in this space, um, but finally made it official, official <laughs> last year. Um, and she continues to, you both continue to grow and excel. I'm very, very proud of the two of you, by the way. Um, so the next question is, you know, what are what are some of the challenges that you face when you when you started? Christian, I know yours is yours is very recent. So I'll, start, I'll do the reverse. I'll start with Dream first. What were some of the challenges for you, Dream, when you just started out? Uh, well, one of the big biggest challenge for me, one of the biggest would have been we started in COVID, so things were just bad on a whole. Nowhere was open. Um, getting managers to sign off on lease agreements was very challenging because everybody was working from home. Um financing was a very very big issue for us we had to look for very um innovative and alternative ways of getting financing to start the project i remember i went to a financial institution when i just started and the loans officer told me verbatim your machines have no value and persons will be scared to wash their vehicles with you so we're not going to finance this because we don't see it as being there to be successful and what I had to do was find some innovative ways of starting. I would tell my family, here's what. You guys sponsor me some packs of rags to wash these cars. And once I get started, you guys can come from, for two free car washes as a way of paying you back for buying your rags. So it was just finding these ways of getting financing to start. And then companies and, and these malls that we operate under, the once they hear the wood car wash, you're automatically thinking a lot of water and person slipping and falling, and then they have to designate space. But the innovative thing about eco wash is we need no infrastructure or drainage, no water or electrical connection, no water actually touches the floor while we're washing a car. But it's getting persons to understand the value of the system and the innovativeness of it and opening up to what could be a new trend. Because in Trinidad, we follow a lot of trends that aren't worthwhile, but the important trends, sometimes it's very hard to get persons to jump on board. Because two liters of water, automatically going to think I'm going to scratch your car, which with our technique, it's impossible to scratch your car. Christiana? Yeah, you, so from, yeah, from my end, I would say when it comes to challenges, firstly, the easy part was is having the idea, right? So... I noticed that um, people just weren't implementing eco-friendly strategies in their life, whether it be shopping with their reusable bag, um, purchasing eco-friendly products, things like that. And so when I thought of the solution, which was the easy part, I asked myself, where are people the most and what do they want the most? People are always on their phones and mobile devices and people, especially Caribbean people, they love their rewards and incentives. So I had the idea that was way back, I would say a little before 2017, 2016, but now the challenge came into actually implementing it and turning your idea into action. Um, so unfortunately, the our, her, our island got struck by Hurricane Maria in 2017. And so my idea got put on hold. Um, it was after that I realized, okay, I can't do this alone because initially it was just um, an idea in my head. And so I thought of, well, one of the challenges I faced was actually how do I have this app that I created and how do I get that out into the public, right? So to do that, I decided I needed a team. We needed to get together. So five years later in 2020, so it was even around that COVID time as well, we were really starting to form ourselves. So we faced a lot of challenges in terms of meeting up face-to-face, -face, you know, having meetings and consultations with all the people we want to partner with. So getting our name out there had to start off on social media. And so the other challenge, I think, because it's such an innovative idea, and I think that's with all disruptors and innovators, is getting people to see the vision and the impact your innovation can have. And because it's so out of the box, people sometimes doubt the impact it will make, and they're not so quick to come on board. A big part of WePlanet's model is collaboration. 
we partner with any and every business that we can. But to get the businesses on board, we first have to convince them that this is worth something partnering with. So because of because of that innovation that we have, it usually takes a little extra to convince and to let them know how they can be part of the We Planet model. But I think ever since we officially launched last year in June, it's becoming easier because we've been building our name. I think with all great things take time, you know, so over time, it's becoming easier to let people know what We Planet is and actually buy into the idea. So we're at that point where we're in the growth and scaling stage where we want everybody on the We Planet app and we want every institution somewhat, some way, somehow partnering with We Planet. So that challenge of getting it from an idea to action, one, I overcome that by realizing I needed a team. So we got a team together. And then, of course, actually getting the word out there, getting the vision out there, because the idea and the app is there already. It's just for people to know about it. So overcoming those challenges with communication, marketing, partnerships is really where it has been at. But we've definitely, as the years go by, have been learning how to overcome that and building um, the We Planet's mission. I think your mic is off, you know, Cheyenne. Yes. So what I got from the real, all this zoom in and I'm still freaking it out. Okay. So what I got from the real is that, you know, financing was a challenge for him. And, you know, the, the, and for both of you, I guess the marketing of your individual uh, businesses, you know, you had to convinced you have to sell yourself you have to explain what the business is because for any average person if you think you know two liters of water my car not gonna be clean that's probably the first thing they would have thought of a christian so who's gonna use that up my you know primary estate on your phone you know and one of the things well i know of of we planet is that it's web-based so you don't have to download uh, the application to your phone, you could use it directly from your laptop, your tablet, whatever device that you have, you know, and I've seen uh, Dream's operation and I know how excellent it is as well, because so for all of you guys listening as well, and anybody who just joined us, we are talking about entrepreneurship in the waste management sector in the Caribbean region. And I'm joined by Christiana Paul from We Planet Inc. from Dominica and Dream Jeffrey from Trinidad and Tobago, the CEO of Eco Wash. So one of the things too, um, just chiming in with my own journey a little bit, when I started out as well, um, that financing part was a challenge. I remember when I first tried to get insurance um, for my company and I was doing some work on the landfill at the time and I went to all of the insurance companies <laughs> And one of them said to me, um, we don't understand what kind of business is this. So your premium is just going to be real high, you know, so without even trying to. And I think that is an area that I'm hoping fingers and toes and everything crossed gets better for all of us in the Caribbean region is that the financial institutions, the banks, the credit unions um, are more amenable they are more open to sustainability driven businesses impact driven businesses and recognize that we do not need the carte blanche you know support from them it has to be different they have to understand how our business models operate and therefore provide us the kind of financial mechanisms that will work so um, as Sweeter said, guys, please feel free to put your questions in the Q&A. And I thank you. I see all of you are from different parts of the world, which is absolutely amazing. Antigua, uh, Ghana, but joining from Nairobi, me in the US, the UK. So it's awesome to have you all here. So please put your questions in the Q&A. So my next question for you both is... Based on where you are right now in your businesses, what kind of support do you think you, what kind of support do you need to help you move from your next stage? First of all, what is the next stage for you? And what kind of support do you think you need to help you get there? Christiana? Right. So as I mentioned prior, We Planet is currently in this growth and scaling stage. So we've been able to 
um, launch our app. We've been able to have um, hundreds of app users install the app. We've been able to get um, partners on board. So we're at the point where we don't want hundreds of users. We want thousands of app users, right? We want to actually see that impact being made. So we're at that point of implementing strategies that help increase our app users as well as our um, partners. So how we are seeking support and how we actually plan to do that is one, we want to be self-sufficient. So when we implement programs like our ambassador program, we're seeking to get youth on board to help be able to be part and promote We Planet activities and initiatives. And then when it comes to collaboration, when we seek support, we don't say we want um, money or anything like that because it goes bigger than that. For us, we want to be able to collaborate on other initiatives with other institutions, you know? So when it comes to support, we we just look for open-minded businesses, organizations, um, and groups to come on board and partner with us on various things. Our app, we call it an ecosystem. There's various um, features of the app, one being eco points. So that is a loyalty type program where people earn points for doing eco actions. Then you have eco challenges where we seek partners to come on board. These are quarterly environmental challenges that um, individuals or groups can take part in. Our last one and current one we have going on, we have it going on with Cheyenne, um, food waste management campaign. And so that is also another opportunity that we look for and support from organizations for. Then we have our EcoLearn aspect as well, where this environmental education section where we just feature articles and links about everything on the environment. And then our user hub called um, Eco Warriors, where everyone who takes part in our eco challenges are featured on the um on the app. So when I think of supports, of course, finance is always welcome. We are reward based, so we do give out rewards to individuals. Um, a big part of how we're funded is through grants and also a sustainable revenue model where we plan to um to implement in-app advertising. So we don't just want to rely on loans or grants and donations. We want to be able to earn our own income. So with the income we're currently receiving, we're using it to find ways to make more money. So that's also kind of where we're at as well. But when it comes to support, a big thing for We Planet is just getting the word out there. So following our social media, sharing our posts, you know, installing the app, those simple things matter. And it falls in line with our motto, small actions, big change. That's exactly what we want to see. So we don't ask for a lot. We ask for small, consistent actions that will contribute to the big change that we aim to, um, to create within the Caribbean region. Okay. Uh, Shayan, you once again, you're muted. <laughs> so, fun times. Okay. So, Tareem, what is the next phase for you and what support do you need to help you get there? Um, for, for me, um, I think basically it's, it's a matter of supporting the business as in patronize. In our two years of existence, we've done over 30,000 washes. So customers have definitely fallen in love with the business. And um, it's just a matter of patronizing our new locations. Uh, the government has been um, very supportive of the business from a grant perspective, but actually getting corporate clients to jump on board. Uh, I, I, I always chuckle at the fact that you would get a grant from the government and they'll say they love you, but to get a government contract to serve as the government vehicles, you're not going to get that. So it's like, pay your, pay your money where your mouth is. Give us a contract, let's service these vehicles. Uh, we are, the, are seen as the only instrument in place to actually achieve SDG 6 right now in the country. So we've been charged by the Ministry of Public um of planning and development to provide them a data that they can go back to the United Nations and say, this is what we have in place to save water um, as EcoWash is the only water conservation car wash at the moment. Uh, I would love to see more financial institutions be more innovative in their thinking. Because as I stated, when the loans officer told me my machines have no value, did she lie? She maybe didn't lie that much because it's new to the market. You can't put a valuation on a machine that this is the first time you're seeing it. You don't even know how to operate it. 
but I think banks need to be, I don't want to say more risky, but more open to where the world is heading when it comes to innovation, when it comes to conservation, and definitely looking to support you. I know um we have one bank that was coming out with a eco loan, and then they retracted that. So mm -hmm. I would definitely love to see some campaigns and promotions around that and government create some policies in kind of cracking down. I know we already have the water restrictions when it's in place, you can't wash a car with a hose, but is it actually enforced? So that's that's the type of support we need right now. Business patronizing institutions, um, giving financing to uh, eco businesses and just the enforcing of the rules and regulations we have in place. Okay. Um, you know, when you said the understanding of the different businesses and the the eco loans, you know, I said in, in my mind, I said, go get my start said, okay, <laughs> with those eco loans, um, because one of our credit unions has an, a green loan right now, but it is not available for businesses like yours. And so that is also a part of the problem. It is when it just came out, I think I met the CEO and I said, listen, that eco guys, I'm, I tend to be a little bold, not all the time, but sometimes I'm a little bold and a little brazen. And I, I walked up to him and after introducing myself, I say, you know, that, that green loan, you have to make sense, you know, because how many people are you going to get to participate in that? There are, many, there are other entrepreneurs who want to move their business forward, who want to start their businesses who are willing to take on a loan, but just based on your your general criteria, they can't even apply. So that's not making sense. And then right when he said, okay, let's have a meeting, he left. So, <sighs> Wusa. Okay, so that is also part of the, that's definitely part of the challenge. And I hear both of you with wanting to have more customers. You both said it in different ways. You know, can you, Tareem, can you, in exchange for a grant, be given financial support by getting a contract to do the work? Can, for Christiana, for you also, you want users, you want participation. Tareem, you talked about that too. You want more customers. You want people to patronize your businesses. You know, how can different organizations support you in making that happen so it's all it's also about being creative in your thinking in terms of what uh if there's an existing mechanism can it be adjusted or is there room for developing a new financial mechanism or a new way of of supporting entrepreneurs in this space uh to help us reach to the next level i think for a lot of us we start on our own we start with the family. We, you know, we have a little saving, so we we use that. Um, but when it comes to really moving us from startup to you know growth before we scale, there's a different kind of support that we would need and a willingness to be able to rethink how we do business, rethink how we provide financial support. Because as you both said, it's not just about getting the grant, it's nice, you know. Right. I am all I, I too am looking for grants. It's nice. Um, it helps you hold you. But if you can bring more business to me, more customers to me, that I think is also fantastic. So one of the so the other question that I want to ask, and guys, if you have any questions, please free to put them in the Q and A. I don't know how come I'm not sure if it's because of this device I'm on. I'm not seeing the Q and A sweeter. Oh, I see it now. Hold on. Please feel free to put your questions in there if there and if there's anything that comes up for you uh, while we're having this conversation. So my next question is how do you all let's talk about that grant process a little bit before I ask the other question. So this one I, I'm throwing at you all on the fly. Let's talk about that grant process a little bit. Uh, what are your thoughts on applying for grants? Do you find them, and 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 uh, what is the? I was gonna say certain ways, but I don't I don't want to preempt your own thoughts, so I'll say it this way. 
yeah, what are your thoughts on applying for grants? Have you applied for grants that are available internationally? Have you applied for local grants? Um, and what has that process been like for you, Tareem? Uh, so, so we have been very successful in getting grant funding after applying at different competitions and pitching. But the grants are very limiting for eco-businesses. So eco-business like mine, most of these grants will tell you we do not finance machinery. Or if you do finance machinery, we're only going to finance the depreciation cost, which is around 30% a year. So my business is heavily built based on building my machinery. I can't get funding for that. My business that would require some level of shelter or real estate to build these machines, most grants will not con um, cover infrastructure, would not um, cover vehicles. So you would have a grant in front of you that would say $100,000, but the only thing you could apply for is help me buy some raw material to develop my own products. So it's very limiting in that regard for businesses um, like mine. Uh, also, a lot of the grants are focused on NGOs and nonprofits. So we have, a, I think the green fund that we have has over, I think it's $3 billion in it. But a green business like mine can't access it because I'm a for-profit business that needs financial support. So it has been very limiting in a lot of regards. Um, so the grants are there. I, I definitely wouldn't say there's a shortage of grants. It's just very limiting in what my particular business can access from these grant funders. Okay, Christiana, what what has been your what has been your experience? Yes, yeah, so my experience is a little bit different because We Planet Inc. is a a social enterprise. So we are we are within the NGO sector. So we're able to benefit of especially especially around the grants around climate change and um um effecting change within and solving environmental issues. So so far, a lot of the grants that we have received, like the RIM, has been taking part in competitions and pitching. Um, um, three notable ones would be the Dominica Youth Business Trust Social Enterprise Incubator Program, where we were able to secure the social enterprise grants, as well as the OECS Island Isaiah Challenge, where that that is where we got our start off um course from, that being five thousand US. And also taking part in also international competitions like um Technovation, where we also get rewarded. Um, we also received um grants funding for winning um those competitions and um pitches. So a lot of our startup course has come from those types of grants, but we're actually in the position of applying for grants for larger funding where you have to give a little bit more. It's not just pitching, it's actually you no, know, you have to write out what's your business plan. What are these sort of things? Um, people sometimes confuse um enterprises like ourselves within the NGO sector that just have an idea. And social entrepreneurship is kind of a new thing, a new sector here in Dominica. I'm not sure what it's like in the other Caribbean islands where we are operating like a business, just that we're doing it for a social cause. So we are able to tap into those NGO grants because we are a social-based business um, in all the technical terms. <laughs> Although I consider just what Darim and Cyan doing falls under the same social causes. But um, so that's what the experience has been like. But I definitely feel when it comes to grants and why we don't rely too heavily on it and we want a sustainable revenue model is because it can be limiting. As Darim mentioned, they want um a lot of grants may not support machinery and certain activities and administrative costs and things of that nature. So you really have to find a way to make the most of whatever you see from the grants and in a way, as you said, drive business so you can fund your own operations. So I can't say I can't say there's a shortage of grants. I can't say we have not benefited from it. That's where most of our capital has come from, but we definitely want to get to that space where we know we can fund our own operations without those limitations that grants have. Hussain, I don't know if I can add it, but one of the things I realized I don't yeah. know if, if it's a trend or if it was always there, but I'm, I'm seeing it popping up more and more than before, is where these grants are now asking you to uh, mirror them one-to-one. -one. So if oh, the grant sure. is for 100,000, you also have to match that at 100,000. 
Yeah, there's a few like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yes. so I, I'm coming to you for money, but you're telling me, hey, for you to get money from me, I you have to also put up the same amount that you're asking for. So that also is a very limiting factor um, for small businesses on a whole, not just green businesses, but small businesses on a whole. Yes. So I had to keep myself calm to me when you mentioned that, Ma. My glands start to raise. Ooh, I felt the hairs behind my neck standing up. Anyhow, but the reason why is because I, and I, I really loved what you both shared about grant funding because one, some of the grants um tend to be quite competitive. So especially the bigger ones. So you are competing against a very large pool. Um, they ask, the, the applications themselves can be a little tedious. Uh, in terms of the kinds of questions that you ask, and if you do not have the expertise either within yourself or your team, you're kind of like, okay, I'm not even bothering to fill this out because like half the questions, I have no idea of how to answer. Um, and one of the other points that you both mentioned is the limiting factors with the grants that are available that we could actually apply for. So um, in, the, in terms of the, the, the limit, the use of the, the funds, so in your case, you need money for machinery, but then you're telling me this brand will cover machine. Or um, Christiana, you might need the money for administrative costs to bring more people on the team to enhance the app in some way. Mm -mm, we don't cover administrative costs or staff. We're not doing that. you know. Or we don't cover land purchase or land lease or the purchase of vehicles, all of which I have seen in my experience in applying for grants myself. Um, and find, and experiencing the same limits, experiencing the fact that, okay, I am not going to, I'm not going to be able to access this. And for those of you who are listening as well, Doreen mentioned that in Trinidad and Tobago, so I want to talk about two things here really quickly. So Dominica, the Caribbean, is we're together, but we're also broken apart. So we have the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, also referred to as the OECS of which Dominica is a part. And then we have all of us from Trinidad and Tobago being the southernmost all the way up to the Bahamas, the full CARICOM region, right? So the Dream talked about the green fund. So every business, so just to give you all a bit of context, every business in Trinidad and Tobago pays what is called a green fund levy. That green fund levy or green fund tax goes into this pool of resources that are available for organizations to fund green projects. However, the pool is only currently available to nonprofit organizations, non-governmental organizations. So faith-based, community-based um, kinds of organizations as well. So businesses like my own and Dreams cannot access that fund, even though the work we do falls within the gambit of what they of what the fund is for um and i have been really advocating for that to be changed for one social entrepreneurship to be recognized so christiana it is brand spanking you in trinidad and tobago as well um for social entrepreneurship to be a recognized legal entity so when you go to start a business you have an option that you can take that says social enterprise um, but that isn't the case right now. We just have limited liability companies, non-profit organizations, sole traders. Those are our options, right? Um, so it is very, it can be very, very limiting for us to, and I, I, while you guys are saying that some of the funds you got were from competitions, I said to myself, I apply for real competitions. None of them have no money. I need to find the ones <laughs> that you all apply to so I can get some money. I think one of one, um, award that I received had a financial gift to it um, out of the many one <laughs> so I need to find those awards and get a little money I think too but yeah so the financial landscape in terms of funding entrepreneurial organizations is very challenging in the Caribbean region still it's not unique to Dominica it is not unique to Trinidad and Tobago but I do feel that because we are still small, even as an entire region, we can develop mechanisms that would benefit businesses, no matter which country you are in. 
Um, and so, because you're fine, Trinidad and Tobago want to do its own thing. Dominica doing something else, Jamaica doing something else, Grenada doing something else. And that, that, that too is a part of the problem. That too is a part of the problem. All right. So my other question for you both is, um, what are your recommendations moving forward? For yourselves, you can talk about government um, as a whole, whichever, whichever one you want to go with, that's fine. So for you moving forward, we are in the year 2023. What recommendations? And some of it you probably already touched on, but if so, if you can just build on what you might have already said, what are some of the recommendations that you have uh, for your businesses moving forward? Dareem? Um, for me, I, I would definitely say more governmental support as in contracts maybe have a more incentive so businesses that utilize greener services, whether it be tax breaks or whatever. I know I think there's some some perks in there for businesses that go on their green initiatives with their ESGs and their environmental KPIs. So I'd love to see some more of that, um, more contracts being given out. I would say also with the grant funding, a lot of these competitions and grants would ask that the organization be three years old or more. And sometimes a business may not be able to make it to three years without receiving some type of financial support. So I think being a little more sensitive to one, the struggles of an SME, but also the struggles of the, the increased struggle of a green SME. I think for us, we definitely need that financial support that would allow us to scale because I think more so for green entrepreneurs, we really see profit coming in at the scaling process or at that scaling stage rather than our next business may see profit from day one um, if it's a normal traditional business. So I'll, I'll definitely love to see that governmental support, um, maybe some more enforcing of um, some of the rules and regulations as it pertains to not washing your car with a hose during periods of water restrictions, maybe some incentives for maybe washing your car with eco wash. You never know. Um, also, some corporate support. I remember I went to a corporate organization and they said we want to have eco wash so that we can say that we're going green, but we don't care if you wash your car with squeezy. We just want to be attached to us and we really don't, we really don't care how you wash your car. The end. So you have a lot of companies that are going on a green bandwagon, but you'll be in a bandwagon that's not really at heart really wanting to actually develop that green um, aspect of your business. So yeah, just support from all levels, from customers to government to corporate. Excellent. Christiana? Yeah, so just to add on what Derry mentioned, I think one from an organizational perspective, always a recommendation that I have and something that we plan as brought we plan its ways is is closed mouths don't get fed. So you as a disruptor, you as an innovator, you have to make the first move. You have to open your mouth. You have to talk about what it is. You have to be able to reach out because the truth is they're not going to reach out to you. You'll have to reach out to them. That being whether it be your spawn, the um partners or your potential um your potential consumers and that um that sort of market, you have to be able to to make the first move. So when sometimes you feel like you're not getting the support, you sometimes have to like work extra hard to make the moves so people know what exactly it is you're doing. So that's why I usually say um closed mouths don't get fed. So from an organizational perspective, from an innovator perspective you have to be able to be confident enough in your idea and business to make that first move especially in the sector of you know waste management you know where sometimes certain um certain structures are put in place and people find it very difficult to move away like with eco wash the idea of having two liters just to wash a vehicle is is an innovative idea and a lot of times people won't easily come onto that so you have to be able to for lack of better terms, sell yourself. And then I think when it comes to recommendations, I want to um, add to what Dareem said in terms of enforcing rules and regulations. In Dominica, post-Hurricane Maria, there was this whole plastic bag ban and 
um, the quest to become the first climate resilient country in the world. And these policies and discussions were put in place, but not yet enforced. And that is why We Planet Inc. is there because you say, okay, let's ban plastics. Nobody use plastic bags for shopping and so on. But yet still the supermarkets still have it there. People are still shopping with their um with plastic bags and not reusable bags. So we entered a space where we noticed a gap and it would be nice to know that we are helping enforce a certain policy, but it will also be good to have the government enforcing it as well. Because as an organization on our own, we can't do it, we can't impact the whole masses. But the government and the policies put in place and if enforced can really make that impact we want to see. We don't, our end goal is not just to say everybody has a We Planet app. Our end goal is to know that there's been an increase in eco consciousness, that people are actually shopping with their reusable bags instead of plastic bags and doing these eco-friendly activities. And the We Planet app is just one way of doing that. But at the end of the day, we can't do it alone. These policies need to be implemented and enforced. And I think that's a big recommendation because I think a lot of sustainable and social enterprises, they always tackle a problem that is even trying to be tackled on a government level. So if there can be some sort of synergy and working together, we can achieve the goal. Because I don't think the governments will be able to achieve it on their own. I don't think us as we plan, we will we'll be able to achieve it on our own. But if there's some sort of working together towards the same goal, because we all have the same goal, we all want to be, as you said, you know, this green and falling in line with all these trends, but to actually make the impact. I think there's a lot of talk that happens at the top and not, not enough work. So that is where organizations like ourselves come into play to help see that work and not just all the talk. So that is what I was saying in terms of recommendations. From an organizational level, closed mouths don't get fed. So you have to make that first move to start to build those partnerships. And then even from a um, governmental and partnerships level, enforce the policies that are being implemented. Awesome. And I 1050% agreed. You know, we have a number uh, waste management in the region, um, especially in Trinidad and Tobago, and from what I know of, of waste management in other Caribbean islands, we have a number of policies that exist. But those policies remain on a desk or remain on a file. They are not enforced. And so I recently heard that our Minister of Public Utilities, who is responsible, whose ministry is responsible for waste management, said that he is going to enforce our national recycling policy, our national integrated solid waste management policies, two policies that have been created years ago that are still have not, he's actually going to not enforce them, but he's going to turn them into law so that they can be enforced. But we also have existing laws and policies that are not enforced, that are, you know, we hear it, the government will say, yeah, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. But then on the ground, you see there is no enforcement. So rather than reinventing the wheel, rather than thinking we need more, we need more policies, we need more legislations. No, let's look at our existing ones. Let's revise and update them wherever possible. And then let's enforce them so that we can move from where we're at to where we want to be. We can't have big visions, our governments can't have big visions for the respect for respective countries. And when you look at things on the ground, it feels like, as my mom says, we're spinning a top in mud. We're spinning top in mud. Nothing changes, we're just going around and around and around in a circle. So enforcement, um, I completely 1000 percent agree with you both where that is concerned. Um, so guys, if anybody is listening, I am telling you to support Arim and Christiana in whatever way you can. <laughs> they are young, fantastic entrepreneurs. Uh, my journey started when I was a little older, but I always I admire them both because they saw the opportunity in their youth and took action. They didn't just say, say well, the government are really doing nothing. You know? So I will just sit by and watch. No, they actually decided I am going to do something about it. And that is what we need. And they saw entrepreneurship as a viable opportunity for themselves. You know, as we planet Inc. is growing and beginning to come into its own financially in, in terms of 
being able to make its own income, you know, eventually it would be able to support Christiana and as she gets older, whatever her life molds into. And for Tareem, the same, you know, it would be able to help him grow his business, have multiple locations with multiple with big staff. And I look forward to seeing Eco Wash plastered everywhere. That that would be amazing to see and and to see Eco Wash in other Caribbean islands as well. Um, because the work that you both are doing transcends boundaries. Um, and I want to really put that out there. I think there are a number of young people like yourselves who still feel like the regular job is where it's at. And when I see young people like you both who are saying, no, 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 I want to do more. I don't just want to work for somebody. I want to have an impact. I want to leave my stamp on this world. I want to create something that my future family can benefit from. Um, and so, or my existing family, because I don't put your hand on anybody. Eh? I just didn't know that. <laughs> but if you want them, you know, um, it is something that, you know, you would be, your businesses will be able to support your family in the future. So with that, if we have no, I didn't see any questions coming up in the chat, nor did I see any in the Q&A box. So what I'm going to do is now wrap up the conversation. So I'm going to give you guys um a minute each to say your closing. Is there anything else you want to say in closing before we wrap up today's discussion about entrepreneurship in the waste management space in the Caribbean? Feel free. The floor is yours. Christiana, is there anything you want to say? Um, to close up, um, I think I'll say two more things, and that's one yeah. to potential entrepreneurs within this space to invest in yourself. Don't be afraid to take that um that step for yourself, because the truth is, once you make that first step, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, it it comes to you. And yes, there will be challenges along the way, as with anything. But I think the discipline and the commitment to your cause and knowing the why you do what you do is what's going to keep you on the road. And to also benefactors and companies and governments to invest in ideas. We Planet is a testament as to what can happen when you invest in an idea. Our startup um, monies came from the OECS Island Ideas Challenge. It came from an organization deciding to invest in an idea. I think oftentimes investors and probably other grant funding agencies look for, I guess, the sustainability aspect and I, the what is your long-term goal, but to, you have to get started first to show your sustainability. So I think there needs to be, especially for youth innovation, youth innovation specifically, you need to be able to invest in ideas. So I think I would just leave on that, you know, as a potential entrepreneur, as someone looking to get into the sustainable waste management sector, entrepreneurship sector, to invest in yourself and to the benefactors and um, other funding agencies to also invest in ideas. Because right now what the world needs is innovation. You know, if what's happening is not working, we need to try something new or we'll end up in the same cycle and not really solve any of the pressing problems that we have. So yeah, thank you so much for having me on. It was a wonderful con conversation. Um, I'm glad I've got to know a lot more about Eco Wash as well. I'm hoping we can see it in Dominica too. <laughs> so um, yeah, thank you, Cheyenne, and thank you, Be Waste Wise, and all the listening public. Thank you, Christiana and Dream. Your closing words. Um, I'll just like to say, not to sound canny, but sign you know, uh, <laughs> we all can make a small step to change. Um, definitely do our part. I will always encourage more um, support from a government level, but also support from an entrepreneurial level and that community. Somebody said something a couple of weeks ago and it just stuck with me. He said, entrepreneurship is a village. Talk to each other. We are all neighbors. And you now learning about We Planet, I'm I'm studying could eco wash beyond we planet have my customers get points so um, taking this small action of just simply washing their car and saving 180 liters of water so it's definitely a lot of uh, of support from the government but also a lot of collaboration within the entrepreneurial space if you see a grant that's out right now asking for application why can't we share this within the entrepreneurial space 
for everybody to take their chance at it. So it's definitely seeing a lot more collaboration amongst green entrepreneurs and SMEs on a whole. But as I said, we all can make some small step because it's 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 not good to say, but drought is coming. We've moved past global warming and now we're in global boiling. And I say we've reached a place where it's irreversible. So how could we still do certain things to mitigate the effects? Right now we're going through a heat spell in Trinidad. The whole of Trinidad doesn't have water. Every day somebody or some community is protesting. And now we actually have a suitable alternative and substitute to the traditional cover system. So I think more and more I'm realizing that as a country, we actually don't have any excuse not to go green. That is awesome. I love what you I love what you both said. And I endorse the collaboration. I endorse it. All right. Think about it and, and hit on Christiana, right? Because it actually came in my in my mind. I was like, um, I wonder if the room could use this place customers. Why? Yeah. So <laughs> the thought came to me while while you guys were speaking very, very quietly. So I one thousand percent endorse that collaboration as well. Um collaboration really is the new currency. And um, Christiana and I met because she was in our waste management accelerator program. And in meeting all the businesses, I was like, I want to work with Christiana. And then eventually she was like, oh, Sean, you know, I wanted to talk to you anyway. So <laughs> that's how it, that is how it happens. Um, and, you know, you continue to grow um, and evolve that way. And, you know, as you said, I, I love that point with that, what that person said to you, that entrepreneurship is a village. I love that. You can't, you cannot walk this journey alone. And I am speaking from my own personal experience of thinking I can do it alone. You really can't. And I'm learning that lesson right now. Even today, I'm learning that lesson. So, you know, and to Christiana's point about investing in ideas, I remember I met a young university graduate. I think I just started SIL, to be honest, at that time too. And he said, you know, Mishan, I have this amazing idea. I can't remember what the idea is now. He said, but I have this amazing idea, you know. He said, but I'm not graduating with $50,000 in my pocket. So who is going to fund this idea of mine, this idea that I've had, that I've been working on, that... I want to see it come to life, but nobody at the time wanted to fund ideas. And I, I think still there is there's some room for more of that, um, to move you from your idea to a, a viable business and how you are able to do that as well. So there's definitely room. I wrote down what you both said because it really has left an indelible mark on me this morning. So I wanted to remember it. So I wrote it down. <laughs> but I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who took the time, who stayed with us uh, for this conversation this morning. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day to be with us. I want to thank Dareem and Christiana for sharing their stories, sharing their journeys with us. And I invite you to connect with them. So, Swita, if you can put their contact information in the chat uh, so that you can follow up with them um, and to keep the conversation going, find a way to support them. And if you, even if you can't, you probably know somebody who can, you know, um, because it's really about growing this industry, growing entrepreneurship in the green space. Um, I have a soft spot for waste management of course but it really is about supporting businesses um in this in in real and tangible ways not not just talk and not just the fancy awards are nice but in real tangible ways help me move my business from one place to the next that is what essentially what we all need in a variety of ways based on the different er levels that we are at or different phases that we are at you know so I want to say thank you to you both. It has been an amazing conversation. I could not have chosen two better individuals to join me this morning. And of course, I also want to say a huge thank you to Be Waste Wise for continuing to facilitate these Caribbean discussions. I reached out to them and said, hello, I know we talk number ways, but 
the Caribbean Waste Management Experience is worth talking about too. And they said, yes, Sean, we would love to have you on board. And it has been an amazing relationship ever since. So I continue to moderate all of the Caribbean sessions. So Christiana and Tareem, you could tell people how good the session was and things. So when I reach out to them, they're not asking me. They're not telling me. Sorry, my Trini accent coming out. I have to remember, not everybody's used to this Trini accent. Okay. <laughs> So uh, they have to remember that not to ask my thousand and one questions is a great opportunity because you never know who is listening. Um, and I have grown because I always say you never, I never know who is listening. Somebody who heard will connect with me and join me and whatever it is or help me answer a question or whatever it is. That's, that's how um, things have been able to grow for me. So guys, if you also want to connect with me, I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, Suisa, you have my LinkedIn as well too. I can't remember. Um, but you could I also do, I just, do. right, good. So you could also just uh send that for them as well, just in case anybody wants to connect with me on LinkedIn. So to everyone, a huge thank you, Suisa. I'll let you say your closing remarks. Uh, thank you, Sean. Thank you, Christiana. And thank you, Doreen. This is actually a very interesting and a very exciting discussion, actually. Uh, and how both Christiana and Doreen brought like really the passion came through in the conversation thanks a lot for your time and uh, to the attendees the webinar is recorded it will go up on our website in two weeks we will send you an email so please sign up to our newsletter to get updates about it thanks a lot have a good day christiana sean and Dareem, and to the attendees as well whoever are in that part of the world i am off to sleep now bye-bye <laughs> Bye, Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. See you at the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.